Ever wonder what really happened to Elvis Presley? Since the announcement of his unfortunate death, there have been some gray areas concerning the circumstances surrounding his death. Some have gone as far as finding pieces of evidence that suggest that he might still be alive. In fact, there have been instances where some claim to have seen him since after his death. So what is really the truth about these takes? The events that follow the last 24 hours of Elvis Presley's life were very suggestive, fueling the idea that there might be some kind of conspiracy about Elvis Presley's supposed death. Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll, spent his final 24 hours in the sanctuary of his Graceland mansion in Memphis, Tennessee. The events leading up to his death on August 16, 1977, paint a picture of a man grappling with health issues and personal demons. On the evening of August 15, 1977, Elvis was in relatively high spirits. He had recently returned from a trip to the dentist, a visit he made late in the evening around 11 p.m. due to his aversion to crowds and desire for privacy. Accompanied by his then fiance Ginger Alden, and his stepbrother, Ricky Stanley, Elvis appeared in good spirits despite his evident fatigue. After returning to Graceland, Elvis and his entourage settled in for a quiet night. He played racquetball with his cousin Billy Smith and Billy's wife, Joe. This was a usual pastime for Elvis, who often used racquetball as a way to stay active. They finished their game around 4 a.m. and Elvis went back to the main house. There he played the piano and sang gospel songs, a testament to his deep-rooted love for music and his spiritual side. Around 5 a.m., Elvis retired to his master suite with Ginger Alden. Despite his apparent good mood, Elvis struggled with chronic insomnia, a condition that had plagued him for years. He was also dealing with a host of other health issues, including hypertension, an enlarged colon, and liver damage, all exacerbated by his prescription drug use. Elvis took several pills to help him sleep, a routine that had become alarmingly regular. These medications were part of a broader pattern of prescription drug abuse, which many believe contributed significantly to his declining health. Ginger Alden, who was with him in the suite, later recalled that Elvis read a book about the Shroud of Turin before finally trying to sleep. At approximately 8 a.m., Ginger awoke to find Elvis still restless. He got out of bed and told her he was going to the bathroom to read. Elvis had a habit of retreating to the bathroom, a place where he often found solitude. Ginger went back to sleep, assuming Elvis would join her later. Hours passed, and it was not until around 2 p.m. that Ginger awoke again and noticed that Elvis had not returned to bed. She went to the bathroom and found him unresponsive on the floor. Panic-stricken, she called for help. Elvis's road manager, Joe Esposito, along with other members of the entourage, rushed to the scene. They attempted to revive him, but to no avail. An ambulance was called, and Elvis was rushed to Baptist Memorial Hospital. Despite the efforts of the medical team, he was pronounced dead at 3.30 p.m. The official cause of death was listed as a heart attack, although later toxicology reports revealed high levels of prescription drugs in his system suggesting that his prolonged substance abuse had played a critical role. The news of Elvis Presley's death sent shockwaves around the world. Fans gathered outside Graceland, mourning the loss of a cultural icon. Elvis's passing marked the end of an era, and the impact of his death was felt deeply across the music industry and beyond. Elvis's funeral was held on August 18, 1977 at Graceland. Thousands of fans lined the streets to pay their respects as the funeral procession made its way to Forest Hill Cemetery. Elvis was initially interred next to his mother, Gladys, but due to security concerns, his body was later moved back to Graceland, where it rests today in the Meditation Garden. The last 24 hours of Elvis Presley's life were a tragic culmination of years of health struggles and personal battles. Despite his immense talent and the joy he brought to millions, Elvis was ultimately unable to conquer his inner demons. His death at the age of 42 serves as a poignant reminder of the pressures of fame and the toll it can take on even the most extraordinary individuals. But following his death came a series of conspiracy theories, most of which point towards Elvis still being alive and well. 
Some insinuate that something sinister had pushed Presley to fake his own death. Let's take a look at some of these theories. Despite the official reports and his widely publicized funeral, conspiracy theories that claim Elvis is still alive have persisted for decades. These theories often cite various pieces of evidence and claim sightings of Elvis, presenting reasons that proponents believe support their claims. Among these theories, one of the most intriguing is the assertion that Elvis Presley is now living as a preacher named Bob Joyce. This theory, along with others, has captivated the imaginations of many fans and conspiracy theorists. One of the earliest and most enduring theories is that Elvis faked his death to escape the pressures of fame and live a normal life. Proponents of this theory point to several inconsistencies surrounding his death. They claim that Elvis was deeply unhappy with his life in the spotlight and faking his death provided a way out. Additionally, some fans believe that the circumstances of his death were suspicious. For example, the official cause of death was listed as a heart attack, but toxicology reports later showed high levels of prescription drugs in his system, leading to speculation about the true cause. Supporters of this theory also argue that there were discrepancies in the documentation of his death. They point to inconsistencies in Elvis's gravestone, such as the misspelling of his middle name, Aaron, as Aaron, which they claim indicates a cover-up. Furthermore, some fans insist that the body in the open casket at Graceland did not look like Elvis and was a wax dummy or a stand-in. These claims, while largely debunked by experts, continue to fuel the belief that Elvis faked his death. Another popular theory is that Elvis entered the Witness Protection Program. According to this idea, Elvis had connections with criminal organizations and his life was in danger. By cooperating with authorities and entering the Witness Protection Program, he could start a new life under a different identity. Proponents of this theory point to alleged sightings of Elvis over the years claiming that he was spotted in various locations, including Kalamazoo, Michigan, and Buenos Aires, Argentina. Among the many theories, the most curious is the claim that Elvis Presley is now living as a preacher named Bob Joyce. Bob Joyce is a pastor in Benton, Arkansas, whose physical resemblance to Elvis and his singing voice has led some fans to believe that he is the legendary singer in disguise. This theory gained traction on the internet with numerous videos and articles comparing photos of Elvis and Bob Joyce, noting similarities in their facial features, voice, and mannerisms. Proponents of the Bob Joyce theory argue that Elvis, having grown weary of his fame, found solace in a life of religious devotion and decided to reinvent himself as a preacher. They point to the fact that Elvis had a deep love for gospel music and often incorporated religious themes into his songs suggesting that a transition to a life of ministry would not be out of character for him. Additionally, they highlight Bob Joyce's impressive singing voice, which some claim is indistinguishable from Elvis's. Despite the persistence of this theory, Bob Joyce has publicly debunked the claims. In interviews and statements, Joyce has emphatically stated that he is not Elvis Presley. He has expressed his confusion and frustration over the conspiracy theory noting that while he appreciates Elvis's music and legacy, he has no personal connection to the late singer. Joyce's church has also released statements affirming that he is not Elvis and that the resemblance is purely coincidental. In addition to the Bob Joyce theory, there are other less widely accepted but equally imaginative ideas about Elvis's continued existence. Some theorists claim that Elvis is living in a secret government facility where he is protected due to his knowledge of sensitive information. Others suggest that he is in hiding and periodically makes public appearances in disguise, citing alleged sightings at various events and locations. One of the more outlandish theories is that Elvis was abducted by aliens. This idea, though not taken seriously by most, has found a niche following among those who believe that extraterrestrial beings had a particular interest in the singer due to his influence and popularity. Proponents of this theory often blend it with other conspiracy theories about government cover-ups and alien encounters, creating a complex web of speculation. 
The persistence of these conspiracy theories can be attributed to several factors. Firstly, Elvis's death was a significant cultural moment, and for many fans it was difficult to accept the loss of such an iconic figure. Conspiracy theories offer a way to keep his memory alive and provide a sense of hope that he might still be out there. Secondly, the inconsistencies and mysteries surrounding his death, while largely explained by experts, leave room for doubt and speculation. Moreover, the internet has played a crucial role in the proliferation of these theories. Social media platforms, YouTube videos, and online forums have allowed conspiracy theorists to share their ideas and evidence with a global audience, creating echo chambers where these theories can thrive. The visual and auditory similarities between Elvis and figures like Bob Joyce are easily amplified through digital media, making the theories seem more plausible to those inclined to believe them. The conspiracy theories surrounding Elvis Presley's alleged survival after his reported death in 1977 continue to captivate the public's imagination. From claims that he faked his death to escape fame, entered the Witness Protection Program, or even lived on as a preacher named Bob Joyce, these theories persist despite substantial evidence to the contrary. While Bob Joyce has openly debunked the theory that he is Elvis, the allure of these conspiracies remains strong for many fans who find solace in the idea that the king of rock and roll might still be alive. But one would ask, how did Elvis get so popular in the first place? Elvis Presley, who is today known as one of the most influential cultural icons of the 20th century, was born on January 8, 1935, in Tupelo, Mississippi. His early life was marked by humble beginnings, profound influences, and a deep-rooted passion for music that would eventually catapult him to unprecedented fame. Elvis Aaron Presley was born to Vernon and Gladys Presley in a two-room shotgun house built by his father. Elvis had a twin brother, Jesse Garen Presley, who was stillborn, leaving Elvis as an only child. The Presley family was close-knit, and despite their financial struggles, Vernon and Gladys doted on their son, providing a nurturing environment that fostered his early love for music. From a young age, Elvis was exposed to a variety of musical influences. His mother often sang hymns to him, and they attended the Assembly of God Church, where Elvis was captivated by the gospel music performed. These early experiences with gospel music would leave a lasting impact on his musical style. At the age of 10, Elvis participated in a singing contest at the Mississippi-Alabama Fair and Dairy Show, where he sang the Red Foley song Old Shep and won fifth place. This early recognition of his singing talent was a pivotal moment, encouraging him to pursue music more seriously. His parents, recognizing his passion, bought him his first guitar for his 11th birthday. Elvis took to the instrument quickly, receiving basic lessons from his uncles and the pastor at his church. In 1948, the Presley family moved to Memphis, Tennessee in search of better opportunities. This move proved to be significant for Elvis as Memphis was a vibrant hub of musical activity, exposing him to a wider array of sounds, including blues, country, and rhythm and blues. He attended L.C. Hume's High School, where he was known as a shy and reserved student. Despite his quiet demeanor, Elvis's passion for music continued to grow. He practiced his guitar diligently and began to develop his unique style blending various musical genres. After graduating from high school in 1953, Elvis worked various jobs to support his family, including as a truck driver for Crown Electric Company. However, his heart remained set on a career in music. In July 1953, Elvis walked into the Memphis Recording Service, run by Sam Phillips of Sun Records, and paid $4 to record two songs, My Happiness, and that's when your heartaches begin, as a birthday gift for his mother. Marion Keisker, Sam Phillips's assistant, took note of the young singer's distinctive voice and potential. In 1954, Phillips called Elvis back to Sun Records to record with local musicians Scotty Moore and Bill Black. During a break in a recording session, Elvis spontaneously launched into Arthur Crudup's That's Alright, injecting it with an upbeat rockabilly flair. 
Phillips knew he had stumbled upon something extraordinary and released the song as Elvis's first single. That's All Right received significant airplay on local radio stations, generating excitement and curiosity among listeners. Elvis's early recordings with Sun Records, including hits like Blue Moon of Kentucky, Good Rockin' Tonight, and Baby Let's Playhouse, showcased his dynamic vocal style and innovative fusion of musical genres. These songs caught the attention of a wider audience and laid the foundation for his burgeoning career. By 1955, Elvis had begun to make a name for himself as a performer, touring extensively and building a loyal fan base. In November 1955, Elvis's contract with Sun Records was sold to RCA Victor for an unprecedented $35,000. This marked a significant turning point in his career. Under the guidance of his new manager, Colonel Tom Parker, Elvis's career trajectory soared. His first RCA single, Heartbreak Hotel, released in January 1956, became a massive hit, topping the charts and selling millions of copies. Elvis's unique blend of rock, country, and blues, along with his charismatic stage presence and gyrating dance moves, captivated audiences and earned him the moniker The King of Rock and Roll. Throughout 1956, Elvis's popularity skyrocketed. He made several television appearances, including on The Ed Sullivan Show, where his performances generated both excitement and controversy. His provocative dance moves, deemed inappropriate by some, only fueled his appeal among young fans. Elvis's debut album, Elvis Presley, released in March 1956, topped the Billboard charts and solidified his status as a musical sensation. Elvis's success continued to grow as he ventured into acting, starring in his first film, Love Me Tender, in 1956. The movie was a commercial success, and Elvis went on to have a prolific film career, starring in 31 feature films over the next decade. Despite mixed critical reviews, his films were popular with audiences and contributed to his immense popularity. While his film career flourished, Elvis remained dedicated to his music. He released a string of hit singles, including Hound Dog, Don't Be Cruel, All Shook Up, and Jailhouse Rock. His music resonated with a broad audience, transcending racial and cultural barriers and influencing a generation of musicians. Elvis's impact on the music industry was profound, as he played a pivotal role in popularizing rock and roll and shaping the sound of modern music. Elvis's rise to fame was not without challenges. His provocative style and immense popularity drew criticism from conservative circles, and he faced scrutiny from the media and the public. Despite this, he remained steadfast in his dedication to his craft and continued to push musical boundaries. In 1958, Elvis was drafted into the U.S. Army, serving two years in Germany. His time in the military temporarily paused his career, but it also endeared him to a broader audience showcasing his patriotism and humility. Upon his return in 1960, Elvis resumed his career with renewed vigor, recording new music and continuing to act in films. Elvis Presley's early life and career growth were marked by a relentless pursuit of his passion for music. From his humble beginnings in Tupelo to his meteoric rise to fame, Elvis's journey was driven by his extraordinary talent, unwavering dedication, and the profound influence of the diverse musical traditions he encountered along the way. His legacy as the king of rock and roll remains enduring, and his contributions to music and popular culture continue to resonate with audiences worldwide. Seeing the impact his music has on people, the time spent building his career really paid off. Today, the annual Elvis Presley Festival held in Tupelo, Mississippi, celebrates the life and legacy of the king of rock and roll. This event, typically taking place in early June, transforms Elvis's birthplace into a vibrant hub of music, nostalgia, and community spirit. The festival features a variety of activities, including live music performances, an Elvis tribute artist contest, a parade, and a classic car show, all designed to honor Elvis's enduring impact on music and culture. The festival draws fans from around the world, providing them with an opportunity to connect, share memories, and celebrate Elvis's influence. 
events such as visits to the Elvis Presley birthplace and museum, panel discussions with those who knew Elvis, and screenings of his movies help keep his memory alive. The festival not only pays homage to Elvis's contributions to music, but also stimulates the local economy and fosters a sense of community pride. So what's your thought on the series of conspiracies stating that Elvis is still alive somewhere? Let us know your thoughts in the comments and do keep in touch as we have more amazing videos coming up.